it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Hello everyone, it's April. I realized that I haven't done the end of the year book tag. I thought I had for some reason and then in my subscription feed, I started getting all of these videos from all of these lovely booktubers doing this tag. And I realized I hadn't done the tag yet. So here we are, we are joining the crew, doing the end of the year book tag. Let's hop right into it. The first question is, are there any books that you started this year that you need to finish? Ah, uh, uh, yes, there is one that I started at the very beginning of the year. I think I maybe even started last year and I still haven't finished it. It's the book you wish your parents had read and your children will be glad that you did. Um, this is a parenting book. I, uh, if you are new here, I have a little girl named Nora. She's uh, one years old, rambunctious, adorable, and uh, I wanna be a good mama to her. And so I thought that I would read this. Um, I feel kind of badly because the, the title of this book makes me feel bad. Um, my parents are awesome and I was raised very wonderfully. I had a really good childhood. So I had this out once and my mom was kind of like, <laughs> I think uh, this is in no way like hating on your parents and how you were raised. It's just about things that you might like to do in your family. So I need to pick this back up. I think I'll honestly have to start right from the beginning because it's been a while, like a long while, but I would like to read this. It's by my bedside. So there's that. The second question is, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? Yes. So when I think of an autumnal book, I mostly think of Gothic books. Um, and I have a real gothic book here that I am so surprised I didn't put down everything when it came through the door. Uh, I don't know how I didn't put everything down and just pick it up right away because it had such good reviews for the most part. Um, that's Mexican Gothic. How did I not pick this up? <laughs> I don't know, but yes, I would desperately love to read this and it's perfect for this time of year. This is about a woman whose cousin has recently gotten married, I think to a fairly wealthy man, and she goes to stay with him at, at their new home. Um, and she gets a letter from this cousin that says, you need to come and get me, I'm not doing well here. And so we follow this woman go to this elaborate home and kind of try to sort out the situation, fill it out because it's not a good, it's not a good vibe. It's not a good scene. It sounds wonderful. And I think it takes place in the 50s, 1950s Mexico. Like, absolutely, I want to read this 100%. Uh, the next question is, is there a new release you're still waiting for? And the answer is no, I can't think of one. I just don't know. I, I, I just don't think there is anything this year. I, my mind is already in 2021 and the release is in 2021. So I, I don't think so. The next question is, what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? Okay, let me get them out for you here. I mean, all of the books that I've already talked about, obviously, but these are books that I just do feel like I want to read um, by the end of the year. The first is a book that I think I might want to pick up in December. It's The Silence of the White City. You guys have seen me talk about this a few times. This is a murder mystery kind of book. We follow detectives who are trying to hunt down a serial killer in Victoria. Um, he or she or whoever this serial killer is, is killing off people in this little town and posing their bodies in super creepy ways. Now, um, this series of murders actually seems very reminiscent of a series of murders that happened 20 years before. Um, are they linked? I have no idea. I want to, I totally want to read that by the end of the year. Um, next, let's go to historical fiction. I'd also really love to read The Royal Governess 
by the end of the year. This is um, a historical fiction book about Queen Elizabeth's childhood and this follows her nanny, her governess, who came to stay with Queen Elizabeth as a child and also obviously Princess Margaret as a child during World War II and how she tried to bring calm and peace to their lives in the middle of war. That would be hard. So that sounds wonderful. And then a book that just recently came in that I'm about to haul is The Nothing Man by Katherine Ryan Howard. You guys know I have fallen in love with Katherine Ryan Howard's writing. I read Rewind by her and it was twisty, turny and fantastic. Um, and this book is kind of a book within a book. We follow a survivor of a serial rapist, serial killer. Um, she writes a book about her experience and this follows her experience reading the pages of her book. And then we also follow the serial killer, serial rapist, who victimized this woman, who has gone off scot-free, who picks up the book and reads it. And it is about um, this woman trying to track down this man who terrorized her. And it's kind of a cat and mouse game, I think. And apparently Catherine Ryan Howard wrote this after reading I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle Mark McNamara, which is a true crime story about the Golden State Killer who also had gone off scot-free. And this was her, like, she questioned, you know, like, what, what would have happened if he had picked up that book and read it? Because by the time it was released, he hadn't been caught yet. He was caught soon after, but this imagines that scenario kind of and just ah, yes I want to read that yes absolutely the next question is is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year I mean I've had probably the best reading year of my life uh thank god because 2020 has been not so nice for anyone um but there is one book on my shelves that I look at and go could you be it could you be the one that makes me just lose my mind with happiness that you are out there in the world? It's The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This has only gotten good reviews. I don't know anyone who's read this and hated it. I just don't. Um, and this follows two sisters. They're twins. And they split apart after I think their father dies. I could be wrong about that. Something happens within their family and they run away. And they run away, but they run away separately. They go their separate ways. Um, one of them passes as white and doesn't tell her husband that she is black, that her family is black. The other um, you know, has a black family and black children. And it's about how their lives are different. And then I I'm assuming that they meet again in this book. It is inspired by Nella Larson's passing, which I read in university and really adored that book. I thought it was a masterfully written book. Um, so I, I have a good feeling about this, but I don't, who knows, right? Who knows? Okay, and the last question is, have you already started making reading plans for 2021? First things first, I'm doing it all over again. In 2020, I gathered up all of my favorite booktubers and I looked at their favorite books from 2019. And I looked at my shelves and I collected all of those books and put them on their own beautiful shelves and I started reading some of those books. And I think that is one of the main reasons why I've had such an amazing reading year. I haven't read all of those books. I probably won't read all of the books that are their favorites of 2020, but I am planning to do that again because I know I can go to those shelves and find some most likely really amazing books. Um, so I'm gonna do that again. The other thing I would really like to do is go specifically to my thriller shelves and basically read authors that I haven't read before. 
I find I'm learning that like sometimes you just vibe with an author's writing in thrillers and sometimes not. Um, so I, I kind of want to do a like two strikes and you're out or if it was really bad, you're just done. <laughs> Um, so Lisa Jewell, for example, I just recently finished reading The Invisible Girl. I would also read another book of hers. I just, there, she's just not for me. She's not a bad writer. She's just not for me. So I'm kind of like, oh, that's good. I can close the door and be done with Lisa Jewell. And I'd like to be able to do that with my thriller shelf. So those are two of my plans for 2021. I hope that you guys are well. Thanks again for being so patient with me. Um, with comments being off for the month of November, I promise you I will have an update in early December about what's going on and hopefully I'll be able to have the comments back again. Um, but this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk with you soon. Bye everybody.